Thank you, Leanne. And first, I, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out to Delaware, my home state. We actually have two people, it looks like, maybe in here from Delaware today. That's that's fantastic. So welcome, everybody, to Tactile Bu uh, Book Builder Kit, How to Host an After Hour Make and Take. And let's go through our agenda really quickly, our introductions. We'll go through our objectives. And then, of course, our presentation and our wrap-up. So pretty straightforward today. Moving on, uh, a little bit of information about this uh, kit. It is $519. It is a quota-eligible product. And uh, it's going to contain many, as you'll see today, many different items that you can use to come up with all sorts of books yourself. Our presenter, Liz Agin, Bastrop Independent School District in Bastrop, Texas. Uh, she's a certified teacher of the visually impaired. And our three objectives today. So you will distinguish at least three benefits of hosting a make and take book building event. You will design a make and take book building event that meets with your professional population and you will recognize at least five characteristics of a book creating using the make and take community of practice. All right, so we will now turn it over to Liz to take it over from here. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Liz. Um, my PowerPoint will be up here in a second because you don't want to look at me. All right, um, next slide. So, I, like you said, I'm a certified teacher of the visually impaired. I've been at this since uh, 2001. Before that, I was a life skills teacher. Um, and I work here in Bastrop Independent School District. I've worked in Washington and Texas, and I'm from Iowa originally. And add just a disclaimer, I'm a tactile book junkie. So if I get a little excited, somebody please remind me to tone it down a bit. And I am a huge fan of this kit now that it's been made available. Okay, next. So today I would like to answer these questions, the who, what, where, when, and the whys of having an after hour make and take. I wanna tell you the perks of having it. I want to discuss the overall expected outcomes. I want to provide feed, and then you'll see feedback from those who've actually attended. And I want to share the handouts and links I've used. And then hopefully with it, we'll have enough time to go over questions. So since there is only one of me, does that make me endangered or limited edition? Keep in mind, there's only one of you. You have permission to share the load. So part of the make and take process is sharing the wealth. It doesn't all have to land on your shoulders as the TBI. And a little bit of history. So what I was finding um, and it was about 15, 16 years ago is when I started this. Um, the materials were, that were made for students or we, you could purchase seemed disconnected from the student and the teacher as well as the therapists that were using the different uh, materials. Everybody seemed to be using different verbiages, um, the um, items were maybe for part of one skill, not all of the other skill. Um, there wasn't enough materials for the students to teach the IEP objectives. And then it was time consuming to make all this. Uh, currently, there are, uh, we have 22 students in Bastrop. I share the load with another part-time VI teacher. There's not enough time for either of us to make everything that needs to be made for those 22 students. Um, should the TVI be the only one making those materials? Should the TVI be the lead? Where can we get these materials? Who's going to purchase it? How do we bind them? When and where do we make them? Are you overwhelmed yet? I was. So I started meeting with the different teams that I worked with via email. And we worked via email because we didn't have enough time during the day to connect. Half the time, we didn't even eat lunch. Um, and um, as the lead, 
I was working closely with other team members to make sure we were using the right verbiage, making sure that the student was, uh, the materials were perfect for their, you know, uh, for the table so that their hand and body is positioned correctly. I can't do all that. So I needed to, to discuss that with the other team members. The materials came from the schools. The janitor and the art teachers became my best friends. They let me know when things were getting ready to be thrown out. Let's, do you wanna look at them first? I emailed my uh, coworkers. Do you have any, some of these materials? I'm going to do a project on the beach. Do you guys have any shells? Do you have, you know, things like that. Um, dollar stores are, you know, my jam. Family, the students and my own donations um, from from them and then I would go to yard sales lots and lots of yard sales and sometimes at yard sales when I was telling them why I was getting it they would try to give it to me for free everyone agreed that there was not enough hours during the school day so we decided make and takes after school was what we needed to do and purchasing of materials depended on the school district's VI budget I just typically buy my own because it's a process. You know, you have to rec uh, you fill out a, uh, a material request form. Then you have to tie it to the IEP objective. Then you have to go find where you're gonna buy it from and figure out all this. By the time everybody gets signs off on it and I get the money, I no longer need it because I've already done it and moved on. So I just choose to do it myself. Then I decided to research the different binding systems. The first one that's pictured is what you typically find on school campuses. Um, it's, they're not that good. If you, um, for instance, I'm gonna pick up one book here. Do you know you what type of system it's called? Uh, yes. Is this the comb binding one? That's the comb binding. They're both comb bindings. This one is like a loose uh, comb binding. I'm trying to get my alt text to show. Um, it is, I'll give you the specific name. It is the C75 comb binding system. And the second one is a ProClick binding system. Um, anyway, the first one I didn't like because if you pick it up by one page, and that's the ones that's typically seen on the school. You, the, pay, the book can fall apart and then you have to put it all back together. The second binding system, uh, one of my students, when I was teaching up in Washington, found at a office supply store and was all excited, told me about it, told me I had to go buy it. And I went and checked it out and I was sold because this one, you could pick it up by one page, it's not falling apart. It is pinched together, so it's a solid bound book, okay? And then there's other um, options. You know, you could bind by binding rings, brads, binders, uh, string, yard, and kind of like sew the, sew the seam closed. But then the amazing APH came out with the Tactile Book Builder Kit. And I I've been a fan ever since. This is a real game changer. The guidebook has excellent ideas of books you can make. Um, and I did a poll of several of my coworkers and the team members, and they all wanted to do after school hours for a make and take at an off campus location. So we could snack and drink and we could have whatever beverage people wanted to bring. Um, so my home became the location because I'm close to campuses and I live west of Bastrop, just our, on the west side of Bastrop, I should say, which is closest to the Austin area. And a lot of our uh, employees in the district live in the Austin area. And so this... Um, so right here I is where we were going to ask a question <laughs> to everyone. We want to know from you... What do you know about the Tactile Book Builder? Do you have it and used it? You have it, but you haven't used it? You've heard about it, or you actually didn't even know about it? And then, if you have the kit, were you aware of the replacement parts that are available? All of the different pieces and parts uh, that are available for replacement. 
So just kind of curious, if you can't access the poll, you're welcome to tell us in the chat if the Tactile Book Builder is something that you have or something that you don't know about. And give a second and let all of those selections come in and then I'll let you know what the results are. They're still coming in. There's quite a few of you today. I changed it so you can actually see how many people are with us today. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and share those results. More than half of you did not even know it existed. You are in for a treat. So we have only 12% who have it and use it, 14 have it but haven't used it, 21% have heard about it. So again, be ready to learn some wonderful things. Go take it away again, Liz. All right, so we're on the next slide. So who could come to these make and takes? Anyone, occupational therapists, speech therapy, paraeducators, teachers, paraprofessionals, supervisors, anybody's interested. You'll notice I left off parent. Parents are very interested. The only thing is um, so my parents so far have asked to just do one-on-one -on -one time. They don't want all the other people here because they feel like it starts feeling like an ARD meeting or an IEP meeting. And they prefer just that one-on-one -on -one time so they can ask a lot of the VI questions that they don't always feel comfortable asking at the school because we're in a more relaxed environment. <coughs> Excuse me. So what you see here is a picture of, I have a little uh, light up sign that says make and take, and I have a sign up sheet. At the beginning of the school year, I put this out at our special ed meetings and tell, you know, I get up and do like a five minute announcement. Hey, we're doing make and takes again at this year. Um, this picture here shows what the slide or the uh, form actually looks like. You are, all I ask is, you know, give me a start time. Some of you want four o'clock, some of you want 4.30. If it's later, then just write it in. And then what day of the week do you prefer that we um, do it on? And I, and I ask them to check more than one day because sometimes uh, and everybody only wants a Thursday. Well, maybe that's the least popular day of the week and, and Tuesday is more popular. So I try to accommodate everyone. And then after the meeting, I will take that around with me to the different campuses as I'm working with the different teachers and show them the sign up sheet, tell them what I'm doing. And if they're interested, put your name down. And so we wind up getting quite a few people. So this first picture is of the tactile book builder kit. It is amazing. I love it. And um, I stole that picture from APH's website. I didn't really steal it. Steal it. I borrowed it. And it's full of lots of really good materials and ideas, like I said. But please definitely look through the guidebook for ideas if you don't have any ideas. There are some great ideas in there. The next picture shows six of many tubs I have in my garage. And I went for um, dividing the tubs up. So like I've labeled them. So there's fabric, there's materials, there's um, textures or beads and things like that. So everything, so you're not digging through tubs. I was trying to be more efficient. So this summer I really went through and reorganized everything to make it more efficient for when we work in the future. And I think we had a, another poll. No, we were going to stop to uh, for the expanded kits. So you might want to describe what, what an expanded kit might be, but I'm going to launch the poll to ask that question. So right now, the book builder kit comes just with the materials and a guidebook that shows you um, different ideas. And I'll let Liz talk about that in a minute. But APH is considering creating a theme pack 
that would go with the tactile book builder kit that you could purchase separate for what you need. They are already actively building one of these. And so we're giving you some choices, but please tell us inside the chat if, if you have a, another idea. So the choices are outdoors, seashore, holiday, other, you can pick technically all of them, but we're really kind of curious, what are you looking for? And please feel free to throw some ideas in the chat. And yes, yes, Pam, you can say all of them. Uh, again, these are Ooh. ideas I'm going to share with the team that's working on building these. So anything that you can give as ideas would be great. And then feel free to always shout out to APH the ideas you have. Just because your idea doesn't fill in all of the sections in our in our ideas where you can make a suggestion that's okay you can make suggestions of things even if you can't fill out all of those boxes completely they all go in front of a committee and sometimes they get combined together so let's see what you said at least in the poll for this one 69 percent of people wanted the outdoors well ding 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 that one is actually in the creation mode right now 61% holiday, 25% seashore, and in the chat I'm seeing daily living, time, weather, cooking, math, sports, animals, transportation, circus, farm life, a day at school. So again, thank you so much. It kind of gives APH an idea of where to go now that you know about the tactile book builder and the theme packs that we're thinking about. Over to you, Liz. Okay. All right. So I love all the ideas that were there in the column. In fact, some of them were on the list for me as well to ask for. Oh, life cycles. Okay, stop looking. Um, so then we decide, you know, I, the participants got to decide day and time that works for it for them. We decided to have it at my house and the participants bring snacks and beverages of their choice. Now, when I say snacks, I ask them to bring enough snacks that they can share because some people can't always get to the store or make something. I always have queso and chips because, you know, we're in the South and I love queso. It's my addiction. Um, and then why? Why are we doing this? Well, VI students were giving materials with no texture to the image and they were asked to read this worksheet but they can't access it because it's not enlarged. It's not, the materials have no texture. There's no braille, no nothing. And then we had students who were doing cooking activities and the tools will be being called something different. So the verbiage wasn't consistent across all boards. Um, there was no consistency in the materials. For instance, speech brings in their materials and then they take it with them when they leave. Um, OT, PT, same thing. Um, I try to leave my materials as much as possible. The only thing I took with me was my data sheets. Materials were needed, but service providers didn't know what to use or how to make it. As I, I heard a lot of, we're not a VI teacher. I'm not, that's not my job. That's so, but they didn't ask me to help them. And then there was little to no time to collaborate. Just let's face it, email really doesn't work. The perks, really, there's too many to name, um, but I did list a few of them. We wound up having amazing collaborations. And in this picture, you'll see two speech therapists looking at um, the tactile um, book builder kit there she has a binder in one hand and in the other hand she has a sheet for how she, uh, the book how she wants to make it um, so she's telling her her idea and the speech teacher that's looking on happened to have that same student last year or the year before so they were able to connect and discuss and all I had to do was stand back and smile and go they got it the idea sharing. So we may be in there making one book, everybody else, because we it's mandatory before you leave that you show what we make. 
just so everybody can get an idea and go, ooh, I like that idea, but I want to try something different. There was bonding. My educational teams, we are so much stronger. They have no hesitation in seeing me in the hallway, uh, slapping a sticky note on my hand as I walk by. There is no, there is no hesitation. We're just great together. It's a stress reducer because we're laughing, lots and lots of laughter, especially when I show something I made and I'll say, don't be a Liz, this is what not to do. You want to do something um, that is more efficient than what I did. And I explain why I did whatever I did, what I was thinking and why it didn't work. And then our favorite thing, no shoes are required. <laughs> Once we get in there, them shoes are off. Some people even undo the top button of their jeans because they just want to relax while they're working. Okay, this, uh, the next couple slides are just some pictures, but I kind of wanted to explain. So these two pictures are actually inside my home. Normally we do it in my garage but it's all weather per, uh, permitting. If it's too hot, if it's cold and rainy, we're moving inside. And luckily my house is big enough, I can move some tables inside. Um, the materials stay in the garage, so we go in and out, but the tables where we're actually making things are in, is in the house. So you'll see the red kits. <laughs> there's a, in that top left picture, there's three of them you can see, actually four, there's a fourth one over on the Chase Lounge. So there's four of them in my house right now, and they're very territorial of their kits. Um, the bottom picture is uh, a picture of my, the other VI teacher with me and two speech therapists. And they're actually going through talking about what they made, how they made it, why they made it, and how they're going to use it. Um, and let me back up just a minute. When I showed the kit to uh, my speech therapist, we met, I met with the head of the speech department and asked her to arrange a meeting with me and all the speech therapists that I work with with my students. We sat down, we started talking, and they all loved the kit, asked me where I could get, where they could get it. And I told it it was at APH, it's over $500. And they were like, oh, that's not in our budget. And then I picked it up and I said, but today I am Oprah you get a kit and you get a kit and you get a kit. Everybody there got a kit so that they could go through and make up their own materials. Um, the next slide that you're, or the slide you're seeing right now, um, like you see, my, my materials are in the garage. Um, I have a laminator. So uh, Jeanette, the speech therapist here, she is actually laminating some materials that she's going to put Velcro on and texture to the top of and Braille for the student that we share. Um, the other uh, speech therapist, she's going through one of my plastic tubs of play food because she's going to do a, a food book, which you will see in the next slide. So here's her pages of her food. Now what is cool about this, she hasn't glued them down yet, but what is cool about it is when she's working with this student, so the picture, the top left, where you see the strawberry and the two slices of orange, she's going to give the student an orange and they're gonna tear it apart and taste it and smell it and roll it around on their hands if willing, uh, put it up to their cheek and things like that. And then they'll go to the book and show the representation of the orange. And so we talked about how many items to place on the page, like the pretzels and the cracker page. I went, mm, might be a little too much because the student um, does have some behavior issues and attention if you, issues. So you don't want to put too much on the page as a result. Before you go further, can you describe what's on each one of those just sure. so that those that can't see have an idea? So the blue, uh, so there's these pages um, are all different colors. So we have a blue page that has one strawberry, two oranges. There's a purple page that has a slice of cheese and an egg. The yellow page has three different colored pretzels 
and then two different types of crackers, one square, one round. Um, then there's another purple page with potato chips, an orange page that has purple grapes on it, a green page that has a lemon and a banana. Uh, the black page has, I think those are pickles and slices of tomatoes. And then um, the last picture on that page is a speech therapist talking to uh, one of our um, educational specialists for our Region 13 uh, Educational Service Center here in, uh, it's, and that's actually housed out of Austin. Uh, she joined us because she'd heard about it and wanted to know more. So she, I'm like, sure, come on, this is the next one. So I'm working on getting the PowerPoint presentation up again for everyone. Amy's internet disappeared on her. Nothing oh no. you can do about that, but you have a question while I'm getting that set up. Um, so with CVI, you'd mostly like to be using the black background sheets? Yes, ma'am. Always use the black because it makes for a higher contrast. But if you have those uh, purple grapes, you wouldn't want to put that on the black background. You'd want to put, put it on another... Um, we typically use the yellow just to add that contrast so, this, so they can see the object. Okay, I'm getting forward to the right slide. And I will share my screen and we'll get going again. Okay. We should be on slide 19. Um, looks like I'm right. And you want me to move one forward now, one correct? Forward. Okay. Sweet. One more. There you go. Okay. So I included this slide, these two pictures, mainly because I kind of wanted you to see the diversity of the people that's here. Um, in the upper left corner, that picture has our special ed district director there. <laughs> and she has a sheet of paper on it that has a list of things that I need to get made for a, for a bunch of different students. And then uh, beside her is the educational um, specialist from our Region 13 Service Center. And then of course the other vision teacher. My supervisor is looking at it going, so what, how do I make something? She came, she walked in and said, I'm here, what do, I, what do you want help with? I'm here to make something, show me. And so we gave her a lot of chores to do that night. Um, the next slide on the lower right has- You have another question. Okay. So what glue are you using? Or even when wired on, what, what are you doing so the students aren't pulling them off? Or are you letting them pull them off? For which, uh, oh, it depends on the book. Some books we want them to remove it, some don't. So we have hot glue, we have used the clear uh, Gorilla Glue, a tacky glue um, for, the, for those different in, uh, ideas. Um, I try not to use wire, I'll try to use pipe cleaners so that way it's less um, abusive to the fingers. <laughs> both the creator and the student and then I also try to use duct tape on the back so the the, the sharpness of the wire or um, uh, pipe cleaner doesn't affect the fingertips. Hopefully that answers. So what is my caseload and how many students are you using these with? Um, like I said, I previously said we have 22 students and of the 22 Oh my, um, probably just over half we're creating books for. Um, some are not as detailed as the uh, images you saw earlier with the food book. Some of them could just be simple, uh, a shape book, um, you know, using different um, shapes. And I try when I do that, try, uh, if the student is, um, totally blind or we don't want them to use their vision. I try to make the texture all the same so they can't go, oh, well, Bumpy is round. That smooth one that had a wave in the middle, that was a square. I try not to do that. I try to use the same texture for all of them. 
unless I want them to differentiate with the texture. Okay. okay. Yep, I want to make sure you have enough time. So you, do I need to move yeah. to the next slide? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, again, this is just some more people that's up. So let's go to the next one with the where to start. There we go. So where do you start? Making a, a book to make a book, never a good idea. You, it's, it's just a waste of everyone's time. So you need to look at what objectives or lesson are you trying to teach? Uh, what materials do you need for the student to be able to access these materials? What verbiage will be used, if any? Um, is it gonna be braille? Is it gonna be large print? How many pages are you looking at? Should it be a book or should it be something else? Should you turn it into flashcards or uh, are they not ready for books? So you give them a page instead and build up to having a book. Uh, and then have I consulted with the team? These are all great questions for collaborating with the other team members. And then the next page or the next slide, sorry, is our book making planning guide that I came up with a long time ago and a speech therapist took a look at it and actually made it even better. Um, but it's basically the student, the title of the book, the subject skill or IEP objective you're working on. Uh, and then, you know, there's a, it's a table from here. So the first column is page number. The second column is texture material. The third column represents. So the orange, it's representing an orange, but let's say you're using um, like a saran wrap texture. So you're saying the texture is saran wrap. It's going to represent the orange. How many are you going to put on each page? The quantity. And then the last column is labels. So are you going to put labels or are you going to leave them off? The tips I have are start simple. Show examples of what's been, and what I do is I have a tub in my garage that has examples of books I've made, kids no longer want them, so I pull them back and I throw them in my tub in case I need them for somebody else. And I show examples of what's been made previously or show examples of books from Paths to Literacy or other websites. Be available during the make and take. So when I'm having the make and take, in the very beginning until the, 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 um, the tone is set, I'm not making anything. The first couple of times that they come to my house, I typically am not making anything. I'm walking around answering questions, providing guidance, and I'm never, I try very hard not to be critical, like, mm, I wouldn't use a, mm -mm. no, I'd say, you know, maybe have you tried looking at this orange object on a black background? See how that image really pops? Things like that. So try, I try very hard not to be critical. Then once my participants keep returning for other make and takes, then I can sit down beside them and make right away and, and I can just answer questions as they arise. Always remember, this is a relaxed atmosphere. Put on some light music in the background, nothing too, uh, too loud. Uh, and then always remember, have fun. Liz, we have yeah. a, a great question that I wanted to from the chat, it's about student preference. So if we have a student uh, that is in the life skills program, has really strong preferences of, you know, what it's liked. And I think that perhaps what's meant in the chat about liking the books from APH um, on the way to literacy series is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So this teacher wants to know, you know, how to handle this knowing that she prefers these books, um, should this teacher continue, you know, should the teacher try to use this kit um, or try to find a way to balance that between, you know, transitioning to the student towards something that might not be as preferred? What wisdom could you share? My wisdom is follow the student lead. They are the expert of their own learning environment. They know what works for them. If they prefer that the paper materials or the books that are already made, use those. These, what I'm talking about, these books is for what's not readily available. So you're trying to work on a new skill. So for instance, I just made 
uh, this week with a student, she brailled a story about school. We used braille paper. We used a binding system. Um, the, the first one actually that I showed way back when. And we used stickers as her, um, her tactile stickers as her images. And then I had her bind her own book. So from her writing the story to binding the book, it was all her. All I did was provide gentle guidance. So she knows what works for her. Your student knows what works for you. So I would strongly recommend to follow your student lead. I think especially too, I agree with that because we want it to be a, um, a pleasurable experience. We want them to experience mm -hmm. literacy and enjoy it. So I think that there's so much value in what you have to say. Just another question here for you. Liz, have you had an opportunity to try this make and take virtually? I have not tried it. I like that idea though. Um, I, well, I take that back. I have done a little bit virtually, but not a real official one. It's just been uh, like during the uh, virtual from last spring, a parent was trying to put together, it, it wasn't books we were making, we were making activity baskets. And so she found a laundry basket that was not large and she was using it, um, wanting to put items in for the kitchen, but she didn't know what to use. So I said, if you're okay, why don't you take you know, pick up your computer or your phone and we can go into your kitchen. And next thing I know, drawers are opening and parents are just pulling stuff out and throwing them left and right. And it's like, yeah, that will work and that will work. And um, then I was like, hey, come follow me. And I <laughs> brought the camera into my garage and showed them some of the items I had and said, do you want to try some of these? And they're like, yeah, but we can't get access to those materials. I was like, don't worry, I'll do a porch drop. So we kind of did it a little virtually with a parent, but I have not done it with um, other educators at this time. Hope that answers your question. Ready for me to move on? Okay, yep. So uh, next, to build a strong team, you must see someone else's strength as a compliment to your own weakness, not a threat to your position or authority. We're a stronger and more effective team for having come together. And we, I found that we are more respectful of each other's field of expertise because I'm hearing like speech therapists asking the OT, hey, my kid's doing this. And then, she, then they look at me guiltily and say, but the kid's not VI. I go, it doesn't matter. We're here for students. It doesn't matter that your student is, that you're talking about right now is not VI. We're here to help students. And then at the make and take, there is no authority. It may be my house, it may be my materials. I am not in charge. I'm just sharing what I have. And then we're all working together to help our students so we can share. Um, okay, where are we at? All right, we can skip this slide, but these are just, uh, we had a desk ed uh, supervisor here and my district director again asking now how 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 are you using this book that you just made so these are just some feedbacks i don't know if we um want to go through all of these but 15 years ago laura doyle was my one of my first guinea pigs of my make and taste and it was all learning about tactile graphics she was a brand new brailleist for our district and I thought it was interesting that she didn't know about black backgrounds being that she's our brailleist, but it makes sense because they're typically just making the braille materials. They're not looking at making the images like we make for our books because the images they make um, come out of the tiger or um, the pee off the pictures in a flash, things like that. Um, Catherine Perez is a speech therapist. Um, unfortunately, she's no longer with our district. She moved to Germany. Um, but uh, she, it was really great. She enjoyed having the different disciplines there. It wasn't just speech and VI. It was anybody is welcome. Um, toward the end, we also started, the classroom teachers started joining us because they 
realized that it wasn't as threatening as they first thought it was. Um, and I, I asked all the people here if they would give me the good and the bad and the ugly. And she said there was no ugly besides her first book. And her first book was, it may not be beautiful, but we don't look for beauty. We're looking for what works for the student. Um, Andrea Keller was a little long-winded. Um, all of her pros, oh, she had a ton of pros, um, that it's helpful having and valuable having the interdisciplinary. It allowed for professionals from different scopes to learn and see examples. Um, it allowed for professionals to see ideas and examples of tactile books and themes used in the past. Um, it was uh, helpful coming, getting new ideas from other uh, team members. Um, it was valuable time for interdisciplinary collaboration. Um, and then she continued on with, you know, it was extremely helpful to have a place with all the materials necessary. In fact, several of my colleagues know the code to my garage and they will text me and say, hey, I'm making this book. I need X, Y, Z, and I know you have it in your garage. Can I get some of that? And I'll say, well, I'm not going to be home till late, but here's the code to get in and get it. Um, the main reason she was not able to create books in the past was, be, was the cost. Who's going to purchase these materials? Nobody has money in their budgets for this. And then um, the make and take solved that problem. The... Um, she loved the team building that we did. So that is a perk. If anything else, that alone is wonderful. And then her only con was that we didn't have enough make and takes. Um, the year she worked with us, I think I had three. She would have preferred if we'd done it uh, once a month. I didn't have time for that. <laughs> Anthea also um, thought it was a waste that it, some teachers throw out so much useful materials she was uh, the first one she came to I actually had two tubs of materials that was going to be thrown out but the janitor asked me if I if I wanted those materials first there was fabric there was broken toys and it, and what I mean by broken toys is like missing parts I can use the parts that are still there for something else um, I guess I, you could say I'm a hoarder but I'm a clean hoarder um, and then, um, you know, like she said, with my system, we can not only save the materials, but make amazing creative use of them for our students. Um, she loved the creative problem solving. And she liked, um, she thought it was really cool how we're able to help each other with projects. And she, in fact, that time she didn't come with anything to do. She came because she has so much fun and she wanted to help others. Um, Jeanette, um, is an amazing speech therapist. She typically works with our three to five year old population. So a lot of her materials are made from scratch. And she would come over even when we didn't have a make and take. She retired last spring and has asked to be invited back so she can help others. The only con she said was the time to continue what she's been making to get it finished. So in closing, um, not everyone came to the make and take, but they shared ideas of what they needed. And sometimes it's because their children are in sports or you know they live farther away. Um, they're the only one at home for their child after school. And we totally get it and it's not a mandatory thing. It's just optional. Um, I, like I said, I had surprise participants. I created uh, a list of things that needed to be made for anyone who came without something to make, and that did start happening. People were coming and say, put me to work, and I didn't have a ready-made list, so I learned to make a list. Um, like I said, the educational teams became closer. We had lots of conversation and idea sharing. Um, participants started requesting make and takes. I didn't have to say, uh, send out an email going, hey, anybody need a make and take? I started getting emails saying, hey, we need a make and take. Um, and typically I set aside one to two hours, but I have been known to, for people to still be a, around at four hours 
because they don't want to leave yet because they got so much more that they want to get made. And they always say, is it okay if we stay a little longer? And then it's structured to be a drop-in event. So it's just drop by whenever you have time and you can drop back out. But I always end with a show and tell because that is so vital. Okay, at this point, do you have any questions for me? Liz, this is Amy, and we had a question in our chat box, just wanting to know more about the materials that come in the box. So I thought that I would just share uh, briefly just about what this kit contains, just based on information from the website, is yes. that it really is an assortment of pre-cut pages um, that can easily have attachments and objects, you know, adhered to it that you could do collage textures. You can adhere um, shapes and raised drawing, things like that. Includes braille paper and braille label material uh, and clear page protectors to offer that, the multiple ways to add braille and print text. It says that all the pages fit into a, these sturdy plastic binders with reclosable safety loops and that binders uh, feature an open view front to allow users in order to be able to create and insert their own tactile cover art. Is there um, I, items that you can recall in your mind that you just really appreciated getting to handle and that was useful to you? Yes, I actually pulled them out and I have them sitting out in front of me on my desk. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to purposely stop sharing for a moment and that makes your picture bigger for folks. So this is the binder we're talking about. Uh, maybe if I turned on some better light in here, sorry. There we go. Sorry, this is my home office. Please don't look at the mess behind me. Um, so this is the binder she's talking about with the interlocking loops and they're nice because you just slip it in and slide it and it locks in place. Now the first time I looked at it I didn't read the guidebook. I didn't have a lot of time. I was like why would they have a clear front for tactile media? What? Well then when I did have time I realized you put the page in here and the tactile will show through. So don't be a Liz read the guidebook or at least explore it a little bit more. Um, some of my favorite pages are um, these needlepoint canvas pages because you can loop things through, tie it through, and then I try to secure it with um, either duct tape or some hot glue to the sharp edges. Um, the, I love the cardboard pages that come in different colors got all these different colors that was shown. Oops, sorry. Might help if I send it the right direction. All these different colors. You got black, lots of black, um, like four sheets of black, five, six, and then green, pink, and orange. So I love those. Um, and for those pages, I typically use the hot glue or the um, clear Gorilla Glue. I like the clear because the other, the normal uh, Gorilla Glue tends to bubble up too much for me and then I'm having to use my Dremel to kind of saw off some of the extra. Um, these are some, the, oh, I have trouble with this word, the Lex. Is that how you say it, Le Leanne? Say it one they're, more time. But they're very soft. I'm, I don't know what those are called. It's V-E-L-T-E-X. Veltex? Veltex, that sounds, okay. yep. I don't know. I make up words too. So, but these are great because you can do um, your um, male Velcro. Velcro to it. And it's, and it's, so you don't even have to worry about soft Velcro. It's really nice. And then my favoriteest page of all are these Ziploc pages. Um, I just, I brought in a new kit, so I don't have these open and I apologize for that. 
But again, these go right in that binder and you have the page opens right here. You can put your extra pieces that you're gonna use on your Veltex page or anything else and stick it in here. Um, my, the food book, the speech therapist did not use these. She used regular Ziploc bags. Um, but yeah, those are my favorite pieces. So Liz, in with that, so when you show the binder in the beginning and you could see the binder clips on either side, how yeah. have you handled the binding when the pages do get thick? And I think maybe what that means too is, is you have uh, large objects that are on side that puff the book up. I think that's the best way I can describe right. it. How have you handled those challenges? Um, I look and see how many objects I'm making. So for instance, um, I had just mentioned the student who made a book on school. So this is her book. We use the regular, you know, uh, C57 binding system that's available at the school. Her, you know, look at the items. Eh, this would fit if it, if I were using those pages, this would fit perfectly in this binding book. But if I were using like my cactus, oh, my TARDIS, it would make this book too big. It wouldn't work. So you got to look at your object, the size of the object, and how many pages you're trying to fit in the book. It may be that you need to do focus on half the book one day and then change the pages out and put the other half in. That's a great suggestion as an or, idea. I love or, that. Mm -hmm. Or have two books. You know, here's what the volume one and volume two. You can, call, you can ar arrange it that way. And one of the comments in the chat box uh, um, from Suzette is just uh, letting all the attendees know that there is Velcro attachments, dots, and strips that are inside the box. And in these last few minutes that we have, oh, wonderful. I like the way you're sh sh holding it up to kind of show it's a big plastic bag that's and filled then with also items. Cool. Uh, the speech therapists love this page. This is a sound page with three recorders. So you have spot for the three recorders and the three recorders come in their own little bag and with a little bit of direction, there's a little sheet, uh, it's hard to get, there we go, a little sheet in here that tells you how to use them and they fit beautifully in here so you can have sound to your book, which is amazing. I I think that is such a, I'm so glad that you pointed that out. I think it shows um, the variability of how much you can do with this, how much or how little. I think in closing for this last little bit of time that we have, do you have any places where I, people are looking for wanting to know where are places, resources to show and tell about things that, you know, maybe you've created that you can share? Um, do you have any information or places that you go to get ideas? Um, like Pinterest or things of that sort? What have you found? I have a sleeping disorder. So a lot of my ideas come at one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And I, that's why I'm like, don't do like Liz, think it through a little more thoroughly before you start creating. Um, Pinterest is a great thing. I don't go to Pinterest because it's a rabbit hole I can get lost in. Um, Pass to literacy. I use a lot and I have posted on there a lot. So you'll see materials I've made on there, um, including I think some of this presentation with additional links will be in there. Um, but let's see. And then there was the one picture we skipped over, but that's okay. Now I can I just, go back to it. There you go. Okay. Um, so teachers need other teachers. This is not a job that can be done alone. Collaboration and friendship are vital in keeping teachers sane. Let me say that again, keeping teachers sane and happy. So the world of VI is not an island. You're part of a team ready and willing to lend a hand. We just need to work on our collaboration skills, not just us, but the, the professionals we work with. 
and then um, I, the next slide, of course, has some of those links. And then keep calm and remember, you're an awesome teacher. You're doing amazing things. To, in someone, you, when you wake up in the morning, you don't realize it, but you are someone's hero because you showed up and you gave that child meaning and you gave them literacy. So pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. Okay. Have, yes. Um, do you do you post your ideas in, in a particular place? I know that you had a post in Paths to Literacy. Are you posting your books or anything like that somewhere? Um, a lot of the things I've made have been on Paths to Literacy. They're not just books. Um, for or, like someone has said they were O and M's, or I mean, there was quite a few that were O and M's. Um, we did a, one of my first posts to pass to literacy was o m travel cards the child wasn't ready for a book yet so we did cards so the first card i think was um a, me a, a metal fence so i used chicken wire and i learned not to hot glue chicken wire down with your bare fingers used pliers or scissors something to hold it down because Obstacle otherwise stick. you're going to fry it <laughs> Yeah, I burned many a finger that way. And then, you know, from there, then after they got to the fence, we would then hand the next card, which was a bush. So that I was actually a bunch of leaves. So he knew he needed to go to the bush. So things like that. You, some kids just aren't ready for a full blown book yet. But by the time that year was up, all those pages were in a book. So he was finally ready for that. So he could carry it and turn the page and know exactly where he needed to go, which was really cool watching. Are you finding that you were using the, um, uh, the kit so it became a consumable and then you were getting ready to use and, and order another kit? Uh, what I do is, um, these are actually some of my replacements. I use them like crazy, so I will order the replacements and it's all available on quota. Well, I, we are right out of time. I definitely want to say thank you, Liz. This has been absolutely fabulous. I am so glad we got you to come join us for an APH webinar. So I want to say thank you. And we'll be sending out all of this uh, to everyone. You did have people ask if you'd be willing to share your form for signing up for your make and takes. And so if you are able to shoot, shoot that my way, I'll, I'll get it out to everybody okay i will do that is okay that the only, is that the only form do they want the bookmaker form too they probably would take all okay. of it you know tvis we like all this stuff yeah so i know again i am saying thank you and you have a great afternoon and just so you know you're free to change the forms however you need to to make them work for you great tip